<laughs> too big. But that the point is that you know, it's hard to the point is it's hard to see it. You know, if you throw a ring in the desert, you're not gonna find it. It's so minute. It's so small, and that's our universe compared to Allah's kursi, just His foot rest. But the hadith doesn't stop there. It goes on. It gets even better. Um, Rasulullah said, "Our universe compared to Allah's kursi is like a ring in a desert." And Allah and it continues and says, "And his and his footrest." Now we're looking at that that footrest compared to Allah's arsh. His throne is like what? Another ring in a desert. Subhanallah. Just think about that. How small are we? We are just. Like, you know, that's a little too big, but you know, that's our, actually, that's our universe. So um, it's, good, it's good you can see it. That's our universe compared to just his foot rest. Okay, and so we're in there somewhere. That's how small we are, and that's important to know. That's who we are, and that's who we're calling out to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is, when we say he is um, al Qawi, the most strong, we mean that even though we are this small, even though we're just a speck on the scale, he is still a Sami. He is still Al Basir. He can still see what you're doing. He can still hear what you're doing. He can hear your thoughts right now. You're probably thinking like this guy, oh my God, when is he gonna stop? I just started by the way. So <laughs> yeah. He he can he knows what you're doing, even though we're this small. And even though we're this small, he has graci graciously sent us guidance. He has sent us the Quran as as a way to um as a way to guide us, you know, He is our Rahman. Even though we are just a speck on the scale, He has sent to us guidance so we can be guided on the right path. And that starts with the Quran. And when we consider revelation, guidance to have come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look at our, look how big we are. Uh, what value is our intellect, our intelligence, our thinking compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's? Why is it that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, He gives a command, for example, pray five times a day, wear the hijab, um, lower your gaze. We say, you know what, I, I don't know. I don't think so. You know, I don't want to. Even though we're this minute, we're this tiny, why do we put our intellect above Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And that's a mistake, you know. We need to remember how small we are. And it's good for our egos. And you hear this all the time, you know. People say, you know, man, I'm from, and they try to like play it up, I'm from Jersey City, man. I'm all that. <laughs> and it's like... <laughs> Oh, sorry, a lot of Jersey City people here. Okay, um, actually, it's funny. I was over the weekend. It's just, this is kind of funny. This reminds me of this hadith. Someone was like, um, I was talking to his brother, and he's like, Yo, man, and check this. He's like, I'm from Algeria. And I'm like, I don't even know where Algeria is, to be honest. You know, like, that's why I asked on Facebook, wh where do they even speak there? You know, they're like, I'm from Algeria, man. And I'm just like, So? What, what I thought was like, Look, we are this small. Who cares where you're from? It doesn't matter where you were born or who you're born as. Right? Just think about that for a second. So, even though we're this small, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has still guided us. He has sent us a guidance. Okay? And our intellect compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's is nothing. Okay? When He gives us the command, we can't, you know, think twice about it. We can't be like, well, I don't know. So that, we're looking at the relationship between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are we calling out to? Who are we making dua to? When, <coughs> when my, when, a land is placed with mines, when mines are planted, what is made? Mine maps are made, right? To guide the, the army through the land so they, they'll make it safely. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the Qur'an as a map to navigate through the, li the minefield of life. But so many times we don't have the Qur'an plugged into our hearts. We don't follow it. We don't even read it. Forget about it. We're too busy listening to songs, you know? So guidance has come to us and we need to be smart. We need to look at it and really understand it. Um, in order to be successful. And to give this example, um, once, very long ago, there was a king, okay? And this king had a very odd-shaped nose. It was, it was deformed and it was odd-shaped. So he wanted to have surgery on it just to get it fixed up, okay? So he got surgery and it was, but after surgery it wasn't, it, it just became flat. It became flat and it became, you know, even more deformed. And the people around the king, they mocked him, they laughed at him, they're like, look at this, you know, he has a flat shaped nose, he looks funny. So everyone, so the king ordered everyone to get their noses cut flat. <laughs> so they, they were just, look just like him. And, no, not Pakistani, come on, man. Why do you gotta put us like that? But, so he ordered everyone to get their noses cut flat, so they looked just like him. And guess what they did? They followed the king's order. It's his command. So everyone got their noses cut and they all looked exactly alike. And then after this, every child that was born, 
they got their noses cut flat. So they were all looked like the king. And th they did this for generations and generations until they forgot what was the norm. They thought, you know, flat nose, that was the norm. Until one day, a man came from another village, another town, another city, to come li live amongst them. And this guy, obviously from another town, another city, he had what? A normal shaped nose. And what did they do now? They pointed and laughed at him. They mocked at him. They're like, look at this guy. What is that thing sticking out of his face? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> that's not normal. But the point is, they had forgotten what the norm was. Over time, they had changed what was originally brought until to a point where they thought what they knew was right. This is what kind of Islam has become nowadays. We think that when we get a commandment from Allah, it's, it's funny, it's weird, it's out there. Wear the hijab, no, that's oppression. Pray five times a day, no, I have to sleep in the morning, I can't wake up. You know, why is it that we try to use our own intellect to put it above Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When we do that, we're becoming like the people with the flat noses. May Allah guide us, I mean. And actually, to give a good example of this, and, uh, and I love this hadith, and you're gonna enjoy this, okay? Um, to give an example of how we put our intellect sometimes over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what the Prophet, uh, uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent. We know from the Surah Najm that the very beginning of Surah Najm, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, what this man, he's saying, the Messenger, is not from him. It's sent to him from a higher being, from a higher power. He doesn't make up anything on his own. It's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Check out this uh, hadith. When I heard this, I was really, you know, it was a wake-up call for me. So, and I know some of you know this hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, and this hadith is sahih, by the way, okay? He said, when a, when a fly lands into your water, you know what you should do? You should, when, a, when you have a glass of water, right? And a fly lands into it. You know what you should do? You should take the, the fly and you dip it in all the way into the, into the glass. And then you take a sip. Well, you take it out later, but <laughs> the point is you dip it in all the way and then you take it out. This, this is proven, this is, sa this is sahih. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this. And, and we, we're thinking like, you know, we're using our 21st century science and intellect. We're like, this, this doesn't make sense. You know, our, our science doesn't, or our intellect is, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to us. In fact, it sounds kind of disgusting and nasty, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Thank you. Okay. But um, <laughs> and in fact, even a science, uh, um, an Islamic Institute of Science. They said, you know what, uh, this hadith is kind of out there. Our science cannot prove this hadith because, you know, it, you know, it, it's, first of all, it un sounds unsanitary. We can't prove it. And think of it from a dour perspective, you know, like a non Muslim comes up to you and says, hey, you're, did your prophet really say this? You dip a fly into a, into a glass, you know? So what they did, they pushed this hadith under the carpet. They're like, yeah, with this hadith, we're, we're not even gonna follow it. This, we're not gonna follow this hadith, you know? So until recently, German scientists in the past century f said, hold on, stop, wait a minute. This man, 1430 something odd years ago, what he said is absolutely true. So our science has now proven it to be true. And, that, and they're like, this is what we found out. What this man said is absolutely true because our science has proven that today uh, a, uh, what do you call it? a fly carries two sacks under it, uh, with it, one under each wing. So under each wing, it has a sack. One of the sacks contains poison. What do you think the other sack contains? The, the antidote, the cure. SubhanAllah, how Allah creates these things, right? So one of the sacks contains poison and the other sacks contains the antidote for that cure. So when a fly lands into your water and it lands kind of on, on the side, that's the way it lands, you don't know which, side t uh, which sack touched the water first and burst open. So what should you do to be careful? You dip it in so both sacks um, burst open and they neutralize each other and so it's safe to drink. But why do we need science to prove this to us? Why didn't we just say, you know what, Rasulullah, by the way, the Sahaba, they, they heard the, the Prophet and they're like, okay, they did it. They didn't have any issues. You know, they did the fly and, you know, they went to town with it. So, <laughs> they, you know, they didn't say, well, this doesn't make sense, you know, no, no, no. But why do, why do we hesitate? Why is that when this commandment has come down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember, He doesn't speak on His own accord. Why is it that we stop and we hesitate and we say, this doesn't make sense? There's a problem here. 